Hello. I'm going to read today from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 22 to 28. When Ezekiel wrote this around about 600 BC, he was in exile in Babylon, in modern Iraq, along with thousands of other Israelites. <clears throat> He'd spent years lambasting them for the sins that led them to be abducted by Nebuchadnezzar and taken into captivity. But now he's had a different message from God. And the message is that God will show the Israelites his favour at some time in the future. So here's the reading. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. <clears throat> For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave to your forefathers, you will be my people, and I will be your God. And we thank God for this reading from his word. A man was travelling on a train. It might have been the train that Peter mentioned on Wednesday. And he was reading his Bible. As he turned the pages, a woman sitting next to him noticed that almost everything was underlined or highlighted. When he closed the book, she said to him, I see you're one of those people who marks everything in the Bible. Oh no, he says, only the good bits. In my Bible, this passage is one with lots of underlining because there are lots of good bits in it. But as we approach Pentecost on Sunday, the standout bit today is in verse 27. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. There are almost identical words in Jeremiah chapter 31. And in fact, there are several mentions of the Spirit of God and uh, even the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. So what's the difference between the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and the Spirit who's firing up of the disciples we celebrate at Pentecost? Well, as ever, Theologians argue over the finer points, but I think basically the Old Testament writers mainly saw the Spirit as either God's creative power or as the means by which he sent his messages to the prophets. Whereas the Spirit whom Jesus breathed onto the disciples and then sent in full power at Pentecost is one who dwells within us, each and every one of us, one who pervades our innermost being one who is able to guide everything that we think and say and do. Ezekiel says that this spirit will come in order to cleanse the Israelites from the way they have profaned the name of the Lord. Well, what's that mean and how have they done it? Well, the Lord's name is holy and a profanity against it is anything that brings the name of God into disrepute among what he calls the nations, that is, those who were not Israelites. God wanted the Israelites to be models of doing his will, of showing his goodness. <clears throat> and the message is the same for us today. God wants us to be a beacon of light to those who don't know him. He wants, to so, to, he wants us to show such love to each other and to our neighbour, following the example of Jesus that people who see us can't help wanting to come closer to him or at least find out what it is that makes us tick. 
And we see a lot of examples of that sort of love around us at the moment, aren't we, in this crisis? From the millions of everyday acts of kindness, to fundraisers like Captain Tom, to the key workers who are going beyond the call of duty regardless of their level of pay, and to the really exposed frontline health and care workers who are risking their lives daily and in many cases losing them. You might say they're not necessarily Christians, not all of them anyway. But I like to think that whenever we see good things being said or done, we are seeing God at work through his Spirit. So let us pray. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with your free spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye-bye.